Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I hope you guys are doing okay and everything is great on your side. Welcome in another episode of Booksite. Weekdays meetings with you guys are amazing and this is the next one. Usually during the evening or the night, I read a little bit of the book Power and Prediction. If you are here for the first time, I would like to encourage you to check the previous episodes and learn uh, what was actually in that book about AI, steam machines, electricity, and things like that. That sounds very interesting. Maybe it doesn't sound like those things go together, together, but eventually, if you check the previous episodes, you will see why they go together. Okay, without useless, useless talking, Uh, Let me jump into the book today and read another part of this uh, this, um, book. Yeah, the section is called System Change is Disruptive. The biggest increase in the adoption of artificial intelligence is if history is any guide going to come from changes in the system. But such change will also be disruptive. By disruptive, we mean that it changes the roles of many people and companies within industries and alongside those changes causes shifts in power. That is, there are likely to be economic winners and losers, especially if system change occurs relatively quickly. To give a sense of that disruption, consider prediction in farming. Farming is an industry where mechanization dramatically reduced employment. But farm, management still resides with the farmer. While the farms are large, there are decisions that reside with them. So much that many farms remain farm, farmer owned. The farmers use predictions regarding the weather to assist in those decisions. But the nature of the land they own was something uniquely tied to their own skills in prediction and in decision making more generally. Things are changing. Farmers are exposed to weather conditions, but critically how they are exposed differs depending on the crops and local field conditions. This additional risk was something that David Friedberg, who provided the first internet accessible weather predictions, realized when he tried to sell insurance to the US. The US farmers, I'm sorry. Like the weather data, like the weather data, the US government had data in the form of infrared satellite images and data on soil composition of 29 million fields that would enable Friedberg to calculate whatever related risk at the field or crop level. Friedberg stated the climate corporation to sell insurance to to farmers, but soon found that they were as interested in the data he had regarding their own fields. Friedberg showed the farmer exactly how much moisture the field contained at any given moment, about a certain, certain level. The field would be damaged if, if worked on. He would show them the rainfall and temperature every day, which you might think the farmer would know, but then the farmer might be managing 20 or 30 different fields spread over several counties. He would show the farmer the precise stage of growth of his crop, the best moments to fertilize the optimum eight-day window to plant his seeds, and the ideal harvest day. Prediction was a large driver of farmers' key decisions, fertilization, seeding, and harvesting. The goal of those decisions was nearly universal, to maximize yield. Quote, Farming had always involved judgment calls that turn on the instincts of the farmer. The climate corporation had turned farming into decision science and a matter of this. The farmer was no longer playing roulette by blackjack and David Friedberg was helping him to count the cards. 
Farmers were used to seeing technological change in the form of the new tools they could use. But this knowledge was replacing how they made decisions. Indeed, the decisions themselves had not only changed but physically moved. Where? To San Francisco, far from rural, rural America. This urban West Coast corporation was not telling farmers in Kansas that they should no longer be growing corn. The Climate Corporation does not currently deal with all farming decisions. The farmers still make some critical decisions. However, a Friedberg notes over, notes, quote, over time that will go to zero. Everything will be observed, everything will be predicted, quote. Farmers are embracing this bit by bit. Author Michael Lewis recounts, quote, no one ever asked Friedberg the question, if my knowledge is, so longer use, is no longer useful, who needs me? Quote, in other words, the portents are toward disruption and centralizing farm management. We don't know how long it will take and whether some decisions cannot be automated. We do know that the industry sees high potential in these tools. Monsanto acquired the Climate Corporation in 2013 for $1.1 billion. Step by step, as prediction machines improve, farmers are not simply taking those predictions and making decisions by ceding those decisions to others. This likely makes farm management better, as information, skills, incentives, and ability to coordinate increasingly make, make the decisions. But at the same time, what will the farmer's role be? There are the landowners, but how long before that too changes? Thank you so much, guys, for being here with me. Reading that part of the conversation of the book actually remind me my meeting with the vice president of John Deere. When he started his lecture at um, AI4 2020, a conference that took place last November in Las Vegas, 2022, he started his speech with these words. Imagine that one person in this room is sick. Will we send medicine to everybody in this room and that, so that everybody get the dose, even those healthy ones? No. So I, why are we spraying the plants equally if some of them are healthy? And that question was very profound one. Because when the vice president of John Deere started his lecture, he started talking, he started talking about personalization. We want to spray the sick one, the one that has a disease. We don't want to spray uh, chemicals on every plant. When I'm reading this book today to you, I really recall that story. Farming is going to change. Guys, thank you so much for being with me tonight. And I hope to see you soon. Please remember, every Monday to Friday, I read a little bit of this Power and Prediction book. If you like this podcast, please like it, share it with your friends, subscribe it, or share feedback if I can improve. Be careful. Take care. Bye-bye.